If you're a longtime follower of my channel, you know that I walked away from Tesla because of its Chinese involvement uh, about a year ago, and then just recently, within the last week, got back into Tesla, not so much because of its electric vehicles, but more because of its supercomputer that it's developing and the data it's collecting uh, that's probably going to uh, guide all the autonomous vehicles in the United States anyway in, in the near future. So with that in mind, my interest in Tesla uh, peaked. I then uh, learned that they just recently delivered their first electric semi to uh, PepsiCo. And uh, ag again, my interest has peaked. And in fact, I started a new um, the portfolio, uh, which I'm calling the Bus 104. Uh, it's, it's basically around the electric um, uh, change that's happening to our world. And all this took me just recently to Tesla's uh, website. And I, learned, I saw the more and learned more about the semi. Um, there were a few things that were a little sketchy. So uh, I got a video just yesterday from Homer. He's the guy who lives in Georgia. He's part of our tribe. He feeds me a lot of information because he's a big Tesla fan. And um, it, it, it showed me a interview that is happening uh, in our government relative to the trucking industry. And I started connecting the dots and saying, can the world keep up with Tesla? Can the world keep up with electric trucks? Is this even a possibility? And then if you've seen recent videos, I've recognized that as, as a result of 75% of all the vehicles on our roads in 2050 will be electric. And then that I'm very strong on the change that's happening relative to artificial intelligence and what that is changing in data centers. So I've learned about data centers and I've come to understand how much electricity they use. And so as I dug deeper and deeper and deeper, I said, we've got all this change going and all of it has to be, is dependent upon electricity. Are we going to have enough electricity? I read something that said that if a, if a, a, a distribution center uh, wanted to change uh, 10 of its, its uh, you know, those carts that go around and lift stuff. And, and if they wanted to change them from uh, gas or LP to electric, they had to make an application to the city to make that change because of the amount of power that those forklifts were going to take would take would drain the city's power source and not be able to keep up with it. And I said, I need to learn more about this. So what I want you to do is I want you to stick with me. This is not financial advice. I want to educate you as to what is the key element that is going to make this possible or make it impossible. It's electricity. Okay, I did a video yesterday where I'm buying $10,000 worth of uranium. You're going to see why I'm buying $10,000 worth of uranium and why you should buy $10,000 worth of uranium as quickly as you can. This is not financial advice. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Okay, I want you to start by going to Tesla's website and watching vi uh, Elon's presentation of their their semi because I think it's it's re it really it's it's it gives you a window into what is what is going to happen. Here's just a clip from it. All right, welcome to Sparks, Nevada, uh, site of the Tesla Gigafactory and our Tesla semi truck uh, factory as well. So, uh, yeah, I can't believe it's been five years. Um, so. Uh, we, we, we unveiled the Tesla Semi uh, five years ago. Um, it's been a lot that's happened since then, to say the least. Um, so we were incredibly excited tonight to actually deliver our first production Tesla Semi truck. Okay, that probably makes you feel pretty good. A again, go watch the whole video. It it's, I think it's about a 34-minute video. Uh, but then I, I went, and this, this is, again, something Homer sent me just this morning, and it's an interview of a gentleman who is very involved in the trucking industry uh, in front of a House committee, and I want you to hear what he has to say. While we share the passion for EVs and cars in late duty vehicles, projecting an automotive construct onto trucking industry dynamics is a massive mistake. 
And let me be clear, if battery electric trucks had adequate range, there was adequate charging infrastructure, and utilities could deliver the power, we truckers would be delighted. But let me explain our reality. Today, a clean diesel truck can spend 15 minutes fueling anywhere in the country and then have a range of about 1,200 miles before fueling again. In contrast, today's long haul battery electric trucks have a range of about 150 to maybe 330 miles and can take up to 10 hours to charge. So for the same 1,200 mile journey, we'd go from 15 minutes of fueling a clean diesel truck once to charging today's BEV four to eight times for dozens and dozens of hours. So according to Mr. Boyle, who's in the trucking industry and has a vested interest, probably wants the uh, electric truck to succeed more than anybody, he's saying it's not practical. It doesn't make sense that you you spend um, eight, hour, eight to ten hours charging a truck to get you 300 miles and then have to do it over and over and over again. It's not realistic. So even though Elon has a, a beautiful truck and a beautiful idea, it just won't work. Now, let's look at the other element. Get, get what he says here, how the cities that are going to provide the electricity for these trucks to charge, how they feel about it. The consumer-facing the consumer -facing EV product is so much further ahead, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about a very heavy-duty, under high-stress, uh, corrosive environment. Each, just so we're clear on the scale of the issue, each electric vehicle battery for a heavy-duty truck weighs 8,000 pounds. And you need at least two of them. So we're talking the weight of you know, four or five cars. And our, my friends and peers in the industry nationwide who have tried to make efforts to put in, say, hey, I'm going to convert a dozen forklifts to electric, or I want to tee up a facility for 30 electric trucks. There is no power. The utilities come back, the cities come back and say, is this some kind of joke? One friend tried to put in, in Illinois a, uh, a facility, tee it up for 30 trucks electrification. The city came back and said, this is some kind of joke. You're asking for more draw than the entire city requires. You're asking for more draw than the entire city requires? So does that mean that electric trucks are not possible? No, I don't think that's the case. And, and Mr. Boyle, I'll explain it to you a little bit further, why, where the hope lies in this. It's, it's not telling Elon that it's not possible. It's not telling the cities you're, you're not going to be able to do it. There is another solution. If the power and in infrastructure is not available, it's not even a consideration for trucking. If we, if we said right now 25 new nuclear plants are going in to create clean energy in the country to feed the grid and other renewables, and then we're going to build it in parallel the charging infrastructure, hey, then we're considering it. That's a business decision. We all want to reduce fuel consumption. That's good business. But without those in place, there's actually no consideration whatsoever. Did you catch what Mr. Boyle said there? If they're going to put on another 25 nuclear power plants in the United States, then it's a consideration. Then we want to talk about it. Then we want to be a part of it. But he basically said, without nuclear power, it ain't going to happen. Now do you know why I bought $10,000 worth of uranium this morning? That's right. Now do you understand the two videos I made on the 24th and the 25th of this month? why that it is essential for the world if it's going to achieve what it wants to achieve, if it's going to power the data farms, if it's going to power the 75% the, the of the vehicles on our roads are going to be electric, and then we add the semi-trucks to it, do you see why electricity is the key to make any of this happen? Without electricity and without enriched uranium, it can't happen. So if you don't see our country passing laws to empower electric companies to get permits quickly so that we can build those 25 nuclear power plants or get into these smaller uh, power uh, nuclear power plants that SMRs, I think they are, if we don't go that route, it, none of this can happen. It, it's like saying... The internal combustion engine is banned, and 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 we we will will it will never we're gonna we're gonna make it illegal for Exxon Mobil to pump oil out of the ground. The world would come to a standstill. This has to happen. So watch the two videos I did on the twenty fourth and the twenty fifth, and learn how you can buy some uranium that is currently selling for about $45 a pound. What do you think it's going to sell for when those 25 nuclear power plants come online? And that's just in the United States. Look at this chart here. This is the anticipated growth
of nuclear power plants in the world. Look at Asia. They know they cannot survive continuing to burn coal. And then over in, uh, who is it? Bob tells me, over in uh, Ireland, is it? They burn peat. Uh-uh. Did you, have you noticed what global warming is doing to our world? Do you watch the evening news? Does fires, tsunamis, hurricanes? Does that make any sense to you? Look, if you don't buy some uranium this next week, I'm sorry. I'm taking it to a, from $45 to $90 a pound. I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm a retired financial advisor. I just love the hell out of doing this. I love that I have a tribe of people. Homer's on top of the list. Big Bad Bill's on that list. And then, um, and then Brian from Nevada, Nevada and Bob from upstate New York and Benny over in, um, where is he? where's Benny in Savannah? Uh, these people just keep feeding me information and I keep giving it to you. And then I share it with you in detail and how I'm investing in it at bestofusinvestors.com. Come to the channel, page down, see how you can become a member of the tribe and get ahead of this. This is the investment opportunity of the world. And right Right now, the Wall Street is doing us a huge favor. They're pushing the prices down on the stocks that are going to take us into the next revolution. It's happening. If you don't believe it, get off the track, get off the road, because the trains and the buses are going to run you down. Mm -hmm.